Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. As you can see, it's nice and warm uh, where I am here in California, um, getting to be 70 degrees or so. So it's quite nice actually here. The sky is blue, uh, all is good. Anissa is here. And so here we are again together. I played a couple of relas up ahead uh, when we started. Uh, as a kind of a beginning tribute uh, to the man, my father, uh, because today is what, the 24th, and in five days uh, on April 29th is his 101st birthday. And uh, so I just thought that uh, it's not going to be Friday on that day, so we will just start it off here. And during the week, uh, let's all of us like share. Uh, photos and uh, you know anecdotes or whatever uh, about him that you might have uh, uh, as uh, in your possession so looking forward to a little contact there from you all so yeah happy birthday Abaji so there's that uh, and so I played uh, two uh, relas up front uh, uh, and one of, uh, one of them was his, which was hugging the Takate Dindana with the middle finger being a prominent uh, uh, element in that Rela and the Dindana, of course. So uh, I believe that uh, there were many Ra's that he created which dealt with Dindana and, and probably uh, a very detailed visit of that particular phrase, not Dine Gene, but Dine Dine. And, and he was a master at that and um, uh, the kind of balance he had between this open sound and everything else that's closed uh, but evenly balanced and coming out like this one complete row is, was just fantastic to hear and you know and marvel at so that's what I did I offered a tribute and uh, so we'll move on forward from there and I wonder if there's a question or two uh, that we might want to begin with and uh, so yeah so what is do we have a question we do. Uh, madam Laya Kari Laya Kari Laya Kari okay it's definitely not like Meena Kari or uh, Ada Kari <laughs> uh, and uh, it's something that you if you all want to have Adhikari on but it's a little difficult <laughs> uh, Laya Kari is uh, well, um, obviously we are talking about having a good sense of time, uh, knowing exactly where the, where the sum is. This is one thing that my father always used to say, Beta, sum ko dekho. Uh, and so uh, what did that mean? I mean, I'm still trying to decipher many hidden, in, hidden interpretations uh, uh, and meanings in that one line, sum ko dekho. Uh, it's not yet revealed uh, totally, but um, I imagine uh, in, an, in, in, in a basic sense that he meant that if you know where the sum is, uh, working backwards, then you already know how much distance you have to cover. And, and, and keeping that in mind, you can also then make out what the terrain is. Um, whether it's an uphill road or whether it's a curvy road, whether it's a downhill road or all combinations uh, and, uh, and how you will, uh, you know, traverse through it. So that is uh, something that maybe he was referring to, one. And secondly, when you know the sum, you also in reference know where you are. And, and so when you know where you are, you are obviously aware of uh, which beat of the rhythm cycle that is. So if an automatic, uh, a built-in recognition of that develops inside of you, uh, uh, that is in, in a way a beginning of trying to uh, uh, become a layakar. So it's important to have good timing, it's important, important to be aware of your position in in, in the development of or the or the uh, you know uh, traveling of the rhythm cycle as it's laid out and uh, also knowing uh, uh, your destination 
and, and, and seeing on the map what that uh, kind of road that is and how you will get there. I mean, sometimes you say, okay, I'm going to go from point A to point B and I'm going to take highway number so and so and I'll get off on this on this road and go to this little town and have some, you know, yeah, go from Bombay to Pune in the old days, stop at Kopoli, have biryani uh, or get into the train and go to Pune and stop at Karchat and have barata varas, whatever. I mean, so those are things that you've already got in your head, you've planned it and you know your destination is, is Pune. So yes, all this is easier said than done, but this is exactly where you need to be. So having said that, how do you, uh, you, know, you know, take off and how do you start off uh, moving towards being a layakar? It's a question that has haunted uh, a zillion uh, rhythmists and uh, instrumentalists. Some of it is natural born. You are able to, uh, you know, find uh, your way uh, from one point of a city to another without having a map. It's a built in something or, or some places where you've been before or you go once and you already know the way again uh, how to get there even in a strange city. So these are things that sometimes you have uh, inside of you uh, certain DNA that makes it possible but uh, the other way of course is to be able to know your language. As they say in the world of acting, uh, know your lines. You must know your lines. If you don't know your lines, you will be faltering along and trying to figure out uh, what to say or stammering through, you know, when your turn comes to speak on the camera. So know your lines and that in this sense means, uh, you know, know your vocabulary, know the language totally, uh, uh, understand the combinations and permutations that you can come up with in this language. And so that helps in the sense that if you're going uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, da, 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 So that's a kind of. But if you know this and you know it inside and out, you also know that da, 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 what do I have left to get to the downbeat, to the sum? You are already aware of that. So if this kind of uh, development happens, you develop your laikari. Laikari is not necessarily put on the metronome and go take, 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 take and play to that or have the Lera box turned on and play to that because that will get you into a robotic system of playing. The human system is something else. When you get on the stage to play with say a Lera player, if you're a tabla player playing a solo, uh, the Lehra player will start his Lehra and, and will be very good in timing. Uh, even then, uh, the fact is that his tempo will waver. There's a human thing about tempo. You, as a tabla player, might, want, uh, might be driving the tempo, going a little faster and faster. The harmony player, on the other hand, might be somebody who plays the Lehra more laid back and relaxed and, and, and drops the tempo uh, uh, slow uh, and then at times ebb and flow is different sometimes certain passage on the Lera will speed up some at some point uh, slow down and so therefore the cycle would stretch like that you as a tabla player uh, have, have to be aware of that human uh, uh, component in, in, in the timing timekeeping Similarly, when you are a tabla player and you are accompanying a sitar player or something, uh, uh, you know, vocalist or whatever, your timing is also in question with that vocalist or sitar player or a dancer. How you're driving the tempo or are you slowing it down or you're keeping it straight, boom. Uh, and when it's your turn to play the utan, do you naturally speed up? All those things happen. So those are things to be considered. So there's many layers involved in being able to develop your understanding of layer and then comes uh you know understanding of what you've got uh in a matra i think one of the things that i have learned is that i've tried to understand and this comes not, not just from indian drumming but from latin percussion drumming as well uh, or jazz drumming is is how to understand the elasticity 
between beat one and beat two and, and so on and so forth with other beats, you know? So if you're going uh, one and two and one and two and da da tinna da da quarter notes da 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 tinna da da tinna eight notes da da tinna da da tinna da da tinna triplet da da tinna da da tinna da da tinna da da sixteens and da da tinna da da tinna da 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 tinna da da tinna da da tinna da 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 tinna da da tinna da da tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna so developing the leg should not be a focus of yours to be visualized in a whole rhythm cycle. It should be visualized from one to two or two to three at the most. So what you can accomplish in those two beats would establish your ability to be able to uh, compress or expand the matra. And, and, and when you have developed that ability, you have started on your way to, to having some understanding of Lekari. And, and this is a subject that can go on and on forever, uh, uh, but your sense of timing being solid is the most important thing. What I did uh, when I used to practice in my younger days, that I used to turn on the radio, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Radio Ceylon in Mumbai in, in the late 50s, 60s, so on. And then songs would come on of great music composers and, and Lata Ji singing or Rafi Saab singing, uh, Kishore Da, Mukesh Ji, everybody. They were all singing the songs. I would play a Kaida, for instance, or a Rela, or a Chalan, or Ra, uh, on a song. And then the next song would come and I would play the same on the next song. The tempo may be different. Uh, uh, and, 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 and the way the song either slowed down or speeded up kind of gave me an idea of how the same uh, 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 pattern would emerge in, in different tempos. And, and then also how to treat it. So that was my basic uh, understanding of uh, uh, you know playing compositions and that's how I developed uh, my you know portfolio of compositions like Uthans and Kaidas and Tihais and Relas and so on uh, in, in different tempos so then when I would get on and play on the stage with a sitar player or a sarot player I would uh, then know that at this tempo I'll play that at that tempo I'll play that and so on and so forth so that was the beginning of how I developed my understanding of lay and my control over uh, how I s saw my travel through the beat. So to arrive at a concert, knowing what a sitar player does, they play in and so on. And so, uh, and how to uh, be ready to be able to play my compositions in those. So lay kari, again, a very detailed subject. It's hard to just, just speak about it in this manner, but, uh, just a short, uh, you know, uh, take on it from me. And if there are other maestros watching or something, uh, you know, please chime in. And speaking of other maestros, I have to mention uh, my dear uh, Guru Bhai, uh, 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 Pandit Yogesh Samsi, uh, on Wednesday, uh, which I think is the, uh, April 29th, my father's birthday. He's gonna do something on Instagram and I think we'll all kind of call in and 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 put in our two bits uh, on that day so i don't know what his instagram address is but uh, check it out uh, i'm sure you guys are good at finding out so so that so any other question
How do you improve the tonal quality of the baya? How do I control the? Uh, improve your tonal quality on the baya. Improve the. Uh, well, first of all, get a nice baya. <laughs> That's important. That was Lock. another question. Where do you get your best tabla? <laughs> uh, actually, you know, there are many. First of all, where do you get your good tablas? Uh, people say, okay, that tabla player, maker is a very good tabla maker or that tabla maker is a great tabla maker. As far as I'm concerned, I swear by this guy or I swear by that guy and so on. Uh, I think tabla making ability is a two-way street. It's not only the tabla maker, but also the tabla player. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because uh, my father used to have his tablas made by a tabla maker known as Sadanand Appa Kashikar. He used to be in Mumbai, and there was a tabla shop uh, uh, in, in on Lemington Road in Mumbai, just like a hole in the wall. And, and we would go there and, and they put out a stool for my father to sit on the street while Sadanan would work on his tablas. But the need or the, uh, the reason for going there was that when it came the time to put the siyahi on, uh, which is the very important element that makes the tone and the tuning of the instrument appear, it was important for my father to be there. And then as the layers of the siyahi were put on, uh, Sadanamji would give my father the tabla, he would test it and say a core goli, or test it and say, okay, take a little bit of this end or take a little bit of that end or rub it in a little bit harder and you know, or it's not even or that kind of a thing. And he would keep talking to Sadanam and, and they would keep collaborating and interacting that way for hours on and on that street with the noise of the cars and all going by until we, they arrived at a point where it was just the tone that my father needed. So what was it? It's a two-way street. It was, an, it was an injection of my father's heart and Sadanan's G's ability to be able to put that thought or that tone or sound vision onto the instrument. And so that has to be put together. So. Most tabla makers have that ability to do that, provided a tabla player himself sits with them and guides them through his needs or her needs as a, as a tabla player. So, so that's an important part of having a good tabla made. So yes, I've seen Anindo Bhai, Swapanda, uh, Shubankar Bhai, Yogesh Bhai, all these guys, they actually sit with the tabla maker. And, and, and they, uh, you know, walk through the, the tuning process uh, with the tabla wala. So that happens. Uh, I, on the other hand, I would have a different issue. I travel so much and I'm here while the tabla maker is in India. And, and so I rely on someone like, say, I used to rely on Sadananji uh, uh, and, and now recently on someone like Haridas. Uh, Vatka, uh, to have a certain idea of what my tabla should be like and then they would make it uh, they, at least Salanji used to make it and then let me know that the tabla was ready then I would go or he would come to the house and, and then we would sit through the final touches of the tuning uh, Haridasji just the, does the same thing he comes to the house and we sit and we work on it now this is something that they did for me, it was a blessing. They didn't need to do that. They are masters of their art form. And, 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 and for me to expect that they would come to my home and, and, and work with me uh, is, is far beyond my uh, ability to understand why they would actually do that. I should be the one going to them uh, and, 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 and sitting with them like my father did with Sadananji. But these days it's a little difficult with uh, you know people swarming over and wanting photos and autographs and so on. So there are distractions. So they come over and they understand that and um, and, and and I thank them for being so uh, you know so accommodating uh, to me. And so that's what I would say to to a key for a good tabla is to be personally involved in the process of of its creation. And, 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 and so then it's made as you would like it to be. 
So that's one thing. Now, the tone of the buyer, again, that is the chain reaction to the first question is, if I have the buyer that I like to play on, then to start with, I have the open tone that I like. And hopefully the resonance that I need to have. Then the thickness of the skin is an important thing. Of course, the CID is an important thing. So all that comes together and then my ability to be able to extract the kind of sound that I visualize coming out of that instrument, combining all that together is, is the process that starts how my bio should sound. So if I have, uh, I have that much resonance. And when I have that much resonance, I can play with it, you know? So I have that much give on the skin, so I'm able to get tones out of it. So So that's my saw and then I have the, the scale available to me but to be able to get to the point of where do I want to go so to be able to find the notes I need to know how much pressure I am applying to get to that note and and then and, and that is something that comes from practice from knowing so uh, uh, that is one of the things that has to happen secondly they say something about the strength in the wrist uh, that uh, determines your ability to be able to uh, uh, you know extract from the buyer uh, emotional element right so I mean half the time I've noticed the other students playing from the from the small end of the garb at the and the kinar over here and, and there are a couple of reasons for it one is that uh, you are able to get an attack song better uh, uh, it's easier to get the buyer to respond from there as opposed to the maidan being bigger, uh, which is how the old maestros used to play. Uh, that all changed, I think, uh, uh, around the time of Gudai Maharaji, Pandit Shantar Prashadji, that is, who played from this shorter end. And, and, uh, but he manipulated that in a way where the slide became an important part of the vibe. So so slide. If I'm playing from the big maidan uh, it, that is a much more distance to travel for the slide than it is from the shorter end. So for me, the slide is the second option. Uh, the first option is pressure. So if I'm playing, I'll be going. Turn it to the maidan here, the attack is more rounder 
and, and therefore you have to work harder to get the punch. Uh, so, but it's a rounder sound. So, so if you were playing uh, Rudey Maharaj style, was tighter. A lot of the tabla students today, they like to have a tighter bayan because it responds much more. Pandit Kishan Maharaji, although was, a, was another uh, kind of a tabla player, whose bayan was, he used to hit the bayan very hard, very hard, very hard to the point where it sounded like oh, oh, oh. And we used to wonder, well, there's no resonance. How is he going to do it? But this is where his strength was and he would <clears throat> press it in and get that juice out of the baya and, and, and so that his playing was different and his baya was lower and so on those old sound systems of India where there was really no bass available it sounded very impressive because the baya was already low and, and, uh, but you had to work hard to be able to get any sound out of it. In today's world <clears throat> with the sound system so good and, and the volume that you can get out of it. If the bayan is very low, uh, the sound gets muddy because it's just and unless you have the ability to be able to dig in uh, a la uh, Kishan Maharaji uh, and, and extract those kind of notes out of it, uh, uh, it will all sound very woo, 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 woo. So therefore, uh, today's tabla players uh, like to have the <coughs> bio tuned up and put a lot of sticks in and play it that way, get the resonance and, and then just work with that. So uh, uh, myself, I like to have a bio which allows me both possibilities. Uh, that is uh, the resonance, the give in the skin and once I have the give in the skin, to be able to have the thickness of the siyahi just so, so that it makes it possible for an old man like me to be able to push hard and, 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 and get tones out. Like <clears throat> when I used to play in the Bombay film industry, one of the things that you had to learn was how to get the punch out of the bayan. Because here is tabla player across facing the tabla player is the dhola player. This side uh, is a side rhythm like uh, bongos or something. And this side is a percussion player like uh, kanjiri or uh, uh, clave uh, sticks or a uh, triangle or whatever. So there, and one mic like that far up for all of us. So therefore there was no such thing as playing Because from the sound booth, uh, uh, the, the recording engineer would say, uh, uh, So that means the tabla player and the dhula player had to provide the punch. It didn't come from the microphone. So they played like, you know, the dhula players and the kawali tabla players play, uh, which is not, but, so they punch like that. So. so we had to do 
that like five hours a day for a song. And it was kind of tough on the hand and tough on the fingers to be able to do that. But uh, that's what we did. So I like to have a tabla which has the give on the skin, uh, the siahi uh, just so, so that there's not too heavy thick siahi that does not allow me to be able to uh, uh, press the skin so much. In the old days, the maestros used to say, Mota shiai lagana, because it was considered, a, 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 you know, what an amazing thing that with that kind of a mota of siahi or mota arta, the tabla player could still press the baya. I mean, that was like, kya baat hai. And they would wear iron bracelets to practice. Uh, I mean, that's the story that I've heard. So for tonal ability, strength here, which allows you new and it's a little tight when I play more and more I don't get to actually you know what I'm doing all week very busy with the granddaughter Zara and 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 cooking and all that by the way just two three days ago I made uh, lamb keema alu butter it was came out very nicely and and so we are all cooking at home and all sorts of stuff so the only time I get to play the tabla is when I'm with you so once a week so it hasn't yet settled in when it does, it'll have much more of a give and, and will settle at a pitch that I want from where I can press further down and still get the resonance. But this needs to be available. They used to say that the old maestros of Delhi when they played the Kaira and they kept playing after like a, like a year, not a year, about six months or so, uh, they used to make a hole in the Maya where the fingers play. That's how much they dug in with their fingers. And, and, and I've heard that same stories in Punjab and so on. I've seen it happen too. It happened to me once I was playing with Ustad Ali Akbar Khan Sahib and, and a hole developed at, right here. So I switched and, uh, and I kept playing here. The hole was here and the hole kept extend, expanding. Uh, Khan Sahib, uh, of course, it, with his head down, uh, wasn't aware of what's going on and he's playing. And, then, and by the time we got to the jhala, all this was open, total ventilation. And I was playing at this end just to be able to, uh, you know, keep uh, the baya, uh, uh, you know, element in the patterns going. And when, the, when we finished and, and Kasab looked at my baya, he started laughing. He said, why didn't you tell me what, what to tell you? So anyway, that does happen. Uh, uh, so bio development fingers I was talking about it at that practice session we did earlier developing so you have to develop the bio in a way where it is an equal participant with the tabla then and 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 not just that you see you have to realize this tabla projects more tabla projects more baya being a bassy sound uh, it does not project naturally so that projection and that balance between the two has to come from you as a tabla player so uh, that's important but don't try to take an easy way out. I mean, yes, we do have the sound system and all that is there. Oh, there are bass for and I'll raise the bass a little bit. Give me a little bit of high mids so that all this comes through so I can play as soft as possible. That's okay uh, in the concert. But at least when you're doing your riyas, dig in. Play with the resonance of the, inst of the bayan. Really. So...
one way of playing it. The other way of playing it, sorry, turning seven. is the first story uh, you know get involved get some I mean you know it's like okay uh, you come home after the concert and you can say to yourself oh yeah I did some hard work today now I deserve a good dinner so there it is my uh, work is just as important as tabla we sometimes just kind of concentrate on the tabla and and I've seen tabla students practicing and their eyes are on the tabla so it's like watching the tabla. This guy is like, oh, secondary. Okay, he just needs to get one and one and that's it. No, it involves and, and it works, right? work and in tandem and be an equal participant I mean, in other words become legitimate so I think that's uh, important to be able to uh, uh, get a good tone on the buyer is to develop the strength in your wrist the strength in your fingers and not be shy from uh, exerting pressure strength and weight onto your instrument uh, and so keep that in mind and keep that keep in mind the resonance of the instrument that's why it's important to have a good buyer which has nice resonance if it has the resonance then you can work with it so you're not stuck in the low buyer zone of Pandit Kishan Maharajji uh, or a very high buyer zone in order to be able to coax resonance out of it but somewhere in the middle where you have enough resonance but it requires a legitimate uh, you know input of strength to be able to extract the sound out of the instrument and so it becomes what they call something kind of something like a gatteka budge uh, and uh, and that's it I used to I remember <coughs> in Mahim where I grew up there was a oh, uh, I mean tin tin ka chali chali meaning uh, you know like a like a low-income uh, colony where all the tin wallas lived these are the ones who would be beating up the parts the tin parts what they call kali at the edge of that as you entered the gate just on the right side the zamdin khasab used to live in a small little place now you've got 30 parts hammer on the parts going teak 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 and the din is so loud you can hear it five blocks away you arrive there and you're standing outside Khasab's door and you can hear him practicing with that din going on. No sound system. He's just practicing in there on a basic tabla. And, but he had the hands to be able to do that. My father used to say that his guru, Mia Kadarbak, she used to make him sit in winter with the windows open in Punjab where the temperatures dropped to six, five degrees and so on uh, with no shirt, open body and play because the hands were so cold and they were so, it's so hard to play they used to crack open he said they used to bleed but the whole idea was to be able to develop uh, the strength no matter what the weather no matter what the, what the environment around you and be able to be ready with a warm hand to be able to get on the tabla and fly so that's uh, important okay now i'm going to play a little bit and uh, i just wanted to say that next friday i'm going to invite uh, my definitely much 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 better half and a fine incredible kathak dancer antonia tony my wife to join me 
and we will talk about um, dance and tabla and, and see w how that relationship developed uh, because most of my early days uh, were spent in dance classes playing tabla in Mahim and in other places I used to go to Sitara Devi's dance class there was a lady who used to teach uh, dance called Bibi Bai whose house I uh, used to play tabla uh, I used to go to Lachu Maharajji's uh, uh, house where he taught in Dadar and, 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 and at times I even used to go to Bhavans uh, and, and where the dance class was there and I would be practicing. So a lot of my time was spent there. So it would be interesting to talk to her and, 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 and kind of uh, go and, and, and visit uh, what shaped uh, uh, one of the important elements that shaped my tabla playing. Okay, let's see. throw your hand out for the dhirdhe. after that but we'll get there but I also wanted to tell you that today Friday in California Friday 5 p.m. California time the SF Jazz Center is going to broadcast digi uh, digital or online bro broadcast a concert that I did I think two years ago with the legendary bassist Dave Holland and the most incredible saxophone maestro Chris Potter so it's a trio it's called Cross Current Rio 
And so that will be broadcast from 5 to 6 p.m. California time today, Friday, the 24th. Uh, please dial in and watch. What we are trying to do is through these broadcasts, maybe have people put some money in the tip jar that's on the screen so that musicians who are needy in the Bay Area can be provided with some funds. So that's what we are doing. So try and join in and, and, and watch. Uh, okay, so we'll catch up with you next Friday. Both Tony G and I will be there with you. So again, be safe, take care of yourself, wash your hands, etc., etc., and etc. See you soon.